Hey there, Iggy the Investing Iguana here, and today, I've got something special for you. As the 8th ranked influential tiger by Tiger Brokers with over 370,000 reads, I'm excited to share my top 7 read analysis secrets that I bet you didn't know. In the next 10 to 12 minutes, I'll reveal these game-changing techniques that will help you make smarter investment decisions and potentially boost your returns. Get ready to take your read investing skills to the next level. Funds from Operations, FFO, and Adjusted Funds from Operations, AFFO. First up, let's talk about FFO and AFFO. These metrics are like the holy grail for REITs. In the world of real estate investment trusts, REITs, FFO, and AFFO are considered crucial metrics. They are often referred to as the holy grail for REITs due to the valuable insights they provide about the cash flow generated from the REITs real estate operations. FFO is a measure that adds depreciation and amortization expenses back to net income. This is important because these expenses are considered non-cash charges and do not represent actual cash outflows. By adding these back, FFO provides a clearer picture of the amount of cash generated by a REIT's operations. AFFO, on the other hand, takes the calculation a step further. It subtracts from FFO any recurring capital expenditures needed to maintain the quality of the REIT's underlying assets. This gives an even more accurate representation of the REIT's ongoing cash generating ability. In essence, both FFO and AFFO serve to give investors a more accurate picture of a REIT's financial performance than traditional earnings metrics. They account for the unique factors involved in real estate operations, such as depreciation, and provide a clearer view of the cash flow generated by the REIT's operations. This makes them invaluable tools for investors when assessing the performance and potential of a REIT. Occupancy and Lease Terms Next, you want to look at the occupancy rates of the REIT's properties. Occupancy rates refer to the proportion of rented or used space compared to the total amount of available space in the REIT's properties. High occupancy rates are generally a positive indicator as they suggest strong demand for the properties owned by the REIT. This is because a high occupancy rate means that a large percentage of the REIT's properties are being rented out, which in turn generates income for the REIT. However, occupancy rates are not the only factor to consider. The terms and duration of the leases are equally important. Leases are essentially contracts between the REIT, the landlord, and the tenants. These contracts stipulate the terms of the tenant's use of the property, including the duration of the lease and the amount of rent to be paid. Longer leases are generally more desirable for REITs. This is because they provide a more stable and predictable revenue stream. If a tenant commits to a long-term lease, the REIT has a guaranteed source of income for the duration of that lease. This reduces the risk of income fluctuations and helps ensure steady cash flow for the REIT. Furthermore, the creditworthiness of the tenants is another crucial factor. Tenants with strong credit profiles are more likely to fulfill their lease obligations, providing further stability to the REIT's income. Debt Levels and Interest Coverage Now, let's talk about debt. Debt is a common tool used by REITs to finance their property acquisitions. By borrowing money, REITs can purchase more properties than they could using only their own capital. This can lead to higher returns for investors if the properties increase in value or generate significant rental income. However, while debt can amplify returns, it can also amplify risks. High levels of debt can be risky, especially in an environment of rising interest rates. Higher interest rates increase the cost of borrowing, which can eat into the REIT's profits. In extreme cases, if a REIT is unable to meet its debt obligations, it could face bankruptcy. To assess a REIT's financial health and its ability to manage its debt, investors often look at two key metrics, the debt-to-equity ratio and the interest coverage ratio. The debt-to-equity ratio compares a company's total debt to its total equity. A high debt-to-equity ratio can indicate that a REIT is heavily reliant on borrowed money. While this isn't necessarily a bad thing, it can be a red flag if the REIT's earnings are not sufficient to cover its debt payments. The interest coverage ratio, on the other hand, measures a company's ability to meet its interest payments. It is calculated by dividing a company's earnings before interest and taxes, EBIT, by its interest expenses. A high interest coverage ratio indicates that the REIT generates enough earnings to comfortably cover its interest payments, which suggests a lower risk of default. Property Portfolio Diversification Diversification is a fundamental principle in investment, and it holds true for REITs as well. The idea behind diversification is to spread investments across a variety of assets to reduce exposure to any single asset or risk. 
A well-diversified REIT portfolio can help mitigate risks associated with downturns in a particular property type or geographic location. When we talk about diversification in REITs, it can be viewed from two main perspectives, property type and geographic location. In terms of property type, a REIT may own a variety of properties such as residential buildings, commercial office spaces, retail outlets, industrial warehouses, healthcare facilities, and more. Each of these property types has its own market dynamics and risk factors. For instance, the performance of commercial office spaces might be tied to the health of the economy, while residential properties might be more influenced by population growth and demographic trends. By owning a mix of different property types, a REIT can spread its risk and potentially benefit from different market conditions. Geographic diversification is equally important. This involves owning properties in different cities, states, or even countries. The real estate markets can vary greatly from one location to another due to factors like local economy, job growth, population trends, and government policies. By spreading its properties across different locations, a REIT can reduce its exposure to any single real estate market and its associated risks. Management Expertise and Strategy The success of a REIT is heavily dependent on the quality of its management team. This is because the management team is responsible for making key decisions that can significantly impact the REIT's performance. These decisions include which properties to acquire, how to finance these acquisitions, how to manage the properties, and when to sell. A good management team will have a proven track record in the real estate industry. This means they have demonstrated the ability to successfully manage a portfolio of properties and generate returns for investors. They should have a deep understanding of the real estate market, including the dynamics of different property types and geographic locations. They should also be adept at financial management, as they need to balance the use of debt and equity to finance their operations while maintaining a healthy balance sheet. In addition to a proven track record, a good management team will have a clear and coherent strategy for acquiring and managing properties. This strategy should be aligned with the REIT's overall investment objectives and risk tolerance. It should outline the types of properties the REIT aims to acquire, the regions it targets, the methods it uses to finance its acquisitions, and the approach it takes to property management. Furthermore, a good management team will be able to navigate market challenges and make sound investment decisions. The real estate market can be volatile, with property values and rental income subject to fluctuations due to economic conditions, interest rates, and other factors. A good management team will be able to anticipate these challenges and take proactive measures to mitigate their impact. This could involve diversifying the property portfolio, securing long-term leases with creditworthy tenants, or maintaining a conservative debt level. Economic and Market Conditions No REIT operates in a vacuum. Every REIT operates within the larger framework of the economy and the real estate market. Therefore, it's crucial to consider the broader economic and market conditions that can significantly impact a REIT's performance. Interest rates are one such factor. They can influence the cost of borrowing for REITs, which often rely on debt to finance property acquisitions. Lower interest rates can reduce the cost of debt, potentially boosting profits. Conversely, higher interest rates can increase borrowing costs and squeeze profit margins. Consumer spending and employment rates are other key economic indicators that can affect REITs. Higher consumer spending and employment rates can stimulate demand for various types of properties. For instance, increased consumer spending can boost demand for retail spaces, while higher employment rates can drive demand for office spaces. For commercial and industrial REITs, business spending and e-commerce trends are particularly important. Increased business spending can signal a healthy economy and potentially lead to higher demand for commercial and industrial spaces. The rise of e-commerce has also increased demand for warehouses and distribution centers, benefiting industrial REITs. Hospitality REITs, which include hotels and resorts, are influenced by trends in tourism and consumer preferences. An increase in tourism can lead to higher occupancy rates for hotels, boosting their revenue. Changes in consumer preferences, such as a shift towards boutique hotels or eco-friendly accommodations, can also impact the performance of hospitality REITs. Dividend yield and payout consistency. Last but not least, let's talk about dividends. Dividends are a significant part of the appeal of REITs for many investors. They represent the income portion of the investment and are paid out from the earnings generated by the REITs properties. The potential for high dividend yields is one of the main attractions of investing in REITs. 
The dividend yield is a financial ratio that shows how much a company pays out in dividends each year relative to its share price. It's calculated by dividing the annual dividend payment by the market price per share. When analyzing a REIT, it's important to look at its dividend yield as it provides an indication of the income you might expect to receive for each dollar invested. However, the dividend yield is not the only factor to consider. The consistency of the dividend payout is equally important. A REIT that has a history of consistently paying or growing its dividend can be a sign of a stable and profitable investment. It suggests that the REIT has a reliable income stream, typically from long-term lease agreements, and is able to manage its expenses effectively. On the other hand, while a high dividend yield can be attractive, it's important to be cautious of REITs with unusually high yields. An unusually high yield could be a sign that the market expects the dividend to be cut in the future, which would likely lead to a drop in the share price. It could also indicate that the REIT is paying out more than it can afford, which is not sustainable in the long run. All right, there you have it, the seven read analysis secrets that I bet you didn't know before watching this video. By considering factors like FFO, AFFO, occupancy rates, lease terms, debt levels, portfolio diversification, management expertise, economic conditions, and dividend consistency, you will be well equipped to make informed decisions when investing in REITs. Remember, knowledge is power, and by applying these analysis techniques, you will be ahead of the curve in the world of REIT investing. If you found this video helpful, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the Investing Iguana channel for more valuable insights and tips. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these read analysis secrets, so leave a comment below and let me know which one you found most eye-opening. As always, stay savvy, keep learning, and happy investing.